Srilan Prabhu is saying those people will carry the burdens and other burdens. He consented. So he's asking me for tafsir. One ayat is saying no one is going to carry the burdens of another one. Another ayat is saying those who carry their burdens and other people's burdens. I mean, it's pretty clear to me, but. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Ayuz billah in the shaitan or Jim Bismillah. Now it's far by the Tuzu. Has been Allah. Walla hawla walla quota illa billah illa lazim. Madadia Sahibu Saif. Shall look to Sir Albany. There are a lot of things, so many things, that it looks like it's knowledge. So many things for us to know. But how do you know what is for us and what is not for us? To know what knowledge is for you and what knowledge is not for you is itself a marifat in these days. It is itself a, a hidden wisdom in these days. Because we have been born and raised in this Dajjalic and Shaitanic era where we are taught knowledge, any kind of knowledge, but we are not taught manners. What is manners? It is not just to lower your voice or to put your hand on your heart and to walk backwards, no. Manners is knowing your limits. Knowing when your limit begins and where it ends. That is manners. Whether it is with a person, this one is elderly, my behavior must change. This one is ignorant, my behavior must change. Or to ideas, this is medical knowledge, my knowledge is just very little and for me to understand everything is, is impossible. So I must consult with a doctor and the right doctor to the right illness that I am suffering from, not just from any concern that I have about medicine or systems or histories or name it. Whatever brand of knowledge it is to know where your limit begins and where it ends. That is adab and that is something that is completely not taught or put into any stress in this century since the fall of the Hilafat. Because everyone is running after knowledge. Whether it's knowledge that concerns you or doesn't concern you, say, never mind, just run. Whether it's knowledge that is forbidden for you or not, doesn't matter, just run. What do we get now? We get a lot of malayani, knowledge that does not concern us. And that is a sign of what? Holy Prophet is saying, the sign that Allah is not happy with that servant is when that servant is busy with things that do not concern him, malayani. Now take this for example. Everyone is running to gain more knowledge, but they don't know knowledge about themselves, they don't have knowledge about Allah. For knowledge of yourself and Allah, you have to have adab. And adab is to say, now I cannot find this knowledge through these ways, I have to find it through these other ways. Not through these teachers, these are the teachers because those teachers, it finishes over there. The one who's teaching me tajweed cannot teach me about manners, cannot teach me about Allah. You understand? Or those who teach fiqh, they cannot teach me about the remembrance of Allah, myself, and to know Allah. Those who teach about tawhid, same thing. Tafsir, same thing. And we're talking about religious knowledge. Now when it comes to the knowledge of the heart, it is very specialized. As it is very specialized for a knowledge of the heart in the medical field, correct? It is very specialized. You are a doctor, but the doctor of the foot 
is not going to perform heart surgery. He cannot, he must not. If he does that, he is going to be what? He is going to be a murderer. He is going to be charged. But now, we are looking, every knowledge is teaching us, every knowledge, it is for everyone, young and old, male and female, those who are sultans and those who are um, street sweepers is for everyone. This is one of the tricks and the traps of Dajjal in these days. Because to know knowledge that concerns you, that you have to learn. To believe that not every knowledge concerns you, which Muslim out there is going to say, what, you telling me? I cannot study this. Immediately the arrogance comes up and say that, no, I can study it. You don't tell me what to do. And that destroys the wisdom. So you have people who are very knowledgeable, but they're not living the knowledge. They cannot apply that knowledge. And it is a knowledge that is Malayani. That is you. Out. Next time, understand. Add up, we're talking about. Keep it still. You understand? Okay. Now, especially in this way, in the way of Sahib al Saif, in the way of Tasawuf. In reality, the doctor is only going to give you medicine according to you what you need. He may have millions of medicines, everything is there, but he's only going to take what you need. He's not going to give you every medicine. What happens when you take every medicine? You die, you finish. You understand? The man might think, but I need this medicine and this medicine, doctor says, this is the medicine for you right now, maybe later it's going to change. But the man is very impatient. Man is in a rush. In rushing is from shaitan. So, in our way, the Quran is a medicine, correct? The Hadith Sharif is a medicine. In our way, and I'm saying to you what I'm doing, we are very careful that we don't even open up ayats and hadiths that our Shah has not opened up. It may be interesting, it may be filled with knowledge, it may even have some way, somehow, come into our teachings. But our share is not opening it up. It's not necessary. It's like the doctor who has medicines. There's medicine, you cannot ask him why you're not opening this medicine. Maybe it's going to make me to see better, to hear better, to taste better. And he says it is not for you. If you try to do it by yourself, it might be harmful for you. Definitely it's going to be harmful for you. One time, during Shem Allah's time, Hazrat Lari, may Allah raise his station. Sultan al And may his himmat and his madad always be on us. Somebody, someone, open up that hadith to him, saying, because that person hates our shaykh so much, as there are still people today, they hate, although our share has left, they're still hating him. And they cannot put their hate, they put their hate on me. So it's okay, that is Sheriff and his Sunnah. And we used to call him Abu Jahil, Abu Lahab. And they say, Didn't Prophet ﷺ say, give a hadith describing those Turks? There is one hadith. What is he saying? Do you know that one? He's giving a very bad description. He's giving a very bad description, saying that they are very evil, they're going to do so much harm, da 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 da. You understand? 
And he, that one is mentioning that hadith to point the finger at our Shaykh. And when Shaykh Maulana heard it, I remember it is in a recording, he says, why he's opening that hadith? He's saying, we are not opening it yet. Why is he opening it? That is not the meaning that he's putting there. So now we are in a school. If you are in a vocational school, you're learning something. You're learning how to build a building. There are so many knowledges about architecture and about construction, but you are under a teacher. You cannot now jump above the teacher. You cannot just take some knowledge about architecture that is out there and you're going to bypass your teacher and you're going to say, this is it, it's knowledge teacher. Why not? You don't do that in real life. In this school of Tasawuf, you don't. Do you understand? One of the reasons why it is not so uh, advisable to do that is that you are going to be responsible. You are going to carry that burden. Because every knowledge comes with responsibility. Have we finished the knowledges that our Shaykh has talked to us about? Oh, you're very smart, you are. You're going to go from there, come back here again. Yeah, see how smart people I have around. Hmm. You understand? So anyway, I leave that aside. We need to concentrate on things that matter to us. What matters to us now? What is the important thing for us now? What is? Sit over there. I can see you. Better. You can sit over there, Jamal. Yeah, be comfortable. So I can see you too. So to know what is for us, what is most important for us, it is essential so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with us. And in these days, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be happy with us. Because these are very dark and confusing times. And if we don't know that Allah is not happy with us, we're in a very bad shape. Be simple. Be easy. Take what you understand and practice it. And every night to ask, what have I done today to make my Lord happy? You know, we know so much. Quran, so much hadith, so much zikr, so much hidden knowledge, so much tasaw, but to ask yourself this very simple question, what have I done today to make my Allah to be happy with us? And to answer it sincerely, that is a forgotten knowledge. Then to ask, what have I done today to make my Lord to be unhappy with me? And to answer it sincerely. Don't think that just because we're saying Allah, 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 we're going up and down, Allah is going to be happy with us. How do you make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy? So many times we worship just to ask something from our Lord. We worship to ask something. We go to the presence of the Prophet wasalam, to ask something. We go to the presence of the awliya Allah only to ask something. And 99.99% of the time is to ask for something for our lives here in this dunya. Correct? So to ask ourselves, what did I do today to make my Lord happy with me? And to be sincere about it, this is a very forgotten skill. 
and to understand what did I do today to make my Lord to be unhappy with me. I tried this much, Ya Rabbi. I woke up and I worshipped you, but my worship is no good for nothing because don't be a fool to say, oh, I'm the worst one, I'm the worst one. Now this kind of talk is on everyone's lips. Oh, you know, I'm the worst one, I'm the worst one here, my ego is finished. The fact that someone can say your ego is finished, it's showing that your ego is up to Sidrat al Muntaha. Now it's using another trick and another trap now. Because to say you are nothing is so easy, but your behavior is going to show whether you are something or you are nothing. You say, I woke up and I worship, but I came dragging into your presence, Ya Rabbi. You are eagerly waiting every night to see who is awake to answer your call, but I was sleeping. And I'm asking for your forgiveness for that. You become beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're understanding yourself. You're not saying, I'm going to worship Ya Rabbi, so give me this and give me that. It's going to come anyway. We don't ask for the straw, we ask for the wheat. The straw is like this dunya. The wheat, if you take it, you can take some of it, some you can store, some you can even plant again and it comes out. What is that? When we are working for Ahirat. Now, we are all very uh, concerned about so many things in this world. We have to be careful because these are the times of confusion. If you're concerned about things that does not mean anything to you, if you're concerned about things that does not concern you, then Allah's, or Allah's happiness satisfaction is not on us, we're missing that protection, then whatever we touch that time, it is going to be a curse. May Allah protect us from that. Your answer, it's easy for me to give an answer to that. You understand? But first, we have to understand what we're asking, why we're asking, where are we going with this answer? To say, well, I just want to know, or this is interesting to me, or I just want to include, that is not, is not good enough. It's not good enough. What are you going to do with this knowledge? That is something. But from the sohbat that we just gave, I gave so many answers to that question already. What it means when you carry your own burdens, and what it means when you carry other people's burdens, plus your own. Correct? So, we must be busy with what is for us, inshallah, Rahman. Wa minallahu tawfiq, al-Fatiha.